Welcome to Technically Short. We got special guests here for you today. You're going to love it. And Thomas, you can take it from here. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. Today we uh, we have special guests like Sean said. We have uh, Dave Miller. Hey, say hi, hey, Dave. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Let's I, go. I'm honestly uh, really excited for this for this episode because we 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 Sean and I aren't the best at reaching out to people sometimes when it comes to getting guests. And now we're getting we're getting better at it. And whenever um, you were you. You asked to be on, didn't you? Yeah, I said if you ever need someone, you know, yeah. I'm happy to do it. Right, and like, I was like, okay, this is uh, up until like the team night the other uh, team night we had the other day at Amplify. I was like, okay, this is happening, <laughs> and then I was like, it's, it's, okay, and then and then and then I got the re- be reminded who you are again by just like your personality and how bright you are. Okay, and well, I, thanks. And like, uh, like it was. Like, I, I was talking to Ian and Brady, um, who, who, if people don't know who that is, they work on production and IT at Amplify Church. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm actually really excited for this because, like, of just, like, how, like, it, because, like, that reminded me of, like, specifically about your servant heart and, like, about how, like that, like, how you, like, dove into uh, just production because there was a need and I will maybe go into that a bit, but like that's not going to be the main topic of the conversation. But yeah, I, I like I like spontaneity. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't always like being put in a box. Yeah, um, I like jumping in where the, you know when when you see that there's help needed. I like just kind of that spontaneity of jumping in and just kind of you know helping out and contributing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And to kind of get into like talk to um. See, talk to the audience real quick. Um, So we were trying to figure out like what we were going to do for the episode, and I had an idea of, um, and maybe this is a separate episode, but I had um, an idea of specifically focusing on the servant heart. And then you, uh, Sean, mentioned what you said, and like we uh, about wanting to talk more about like habits, yeah, and diving into like your your own struggles because of like what you've gone through and like you're like maybe I can help some people with my testimony essentially yeah for sure and I was like let's do that (laughs) 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 that that, that sounds like because like I um I wanted to be true to you like the truest like and I was like I think that like this like whatever and whenever we have guests like, it's not always going to be like, oh, what do they want to do? Right. But that, whenever you gave that option, I was like, that actually sounds like, that sounds like it, it just sounds like it would be something, just knowing your, like, the little bit I do about you would be something that would be beneficial. To not just Sean and I, but to the people, all the people that listen. Yeah, for sure. And I, you know, like, you know, I haven't known you guys that long and, yeah. you know, it gives me an opportunity to get to know you guys a little bit better as well. Absolutely. And, uh, especially through church. Um, you know, these two guys are amazing. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta subscribe to this channel. These guys are for young people, man. They, they have a heart for God that is just on fire and they're, they're world changers. And I, I just feel blessed uh, that they're in my life and in my children's lives as well. Huh. Thanks, Dave. David's the man. Honestly, <laughs> I always love your heart, man. Behind the scenes, the strength that you pull in from the church, like what God's given you is a specific gift. And I'm excited today because we go a little deeper and we get to go a little deeper into who David is. Yep. And it's going to be great. Cool. Yeah, with that said, though, like, you said you got a milestone coming up. Yeah, yeah, I do. So, um,. Uh, October 1st of this year, I will have 11 years sober from alcohol. Let's go. So, yeah, yeah, it's been a journey for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely been a journey. And um, to, what specifically about that journey um, did you kind of, were you thinking about talking about today? Um, well, can I give a little bit of background? Yeah. Yeah, so so growing up, you know, I grew up here in Plum Borough, um, and, you know, I have a, a younger sister and uh, mom and dad were in the house. Um, my dad was a pretty rough alcoholic hmm. when I was growing up. And um, 
you know, it's funny. They say you, you become, you tend to become what you hate. And I always thought to myself, man, I'm never going to be like that. You know, I don't want to be that person. Um, but it, it, it's sort of in your DNA. You know, it's sort of what you know, what you're brought up in. And unfortunately, I guess when tough times come, uh, you've kind of followed that default um, of that type of behavior. And, you know, it's something that I fell into um, later in life. Uh, well, probably when I, I probably started drinking when I was like 15, okay. 15 years old. And, um, yeah, so, you know, like I said, it was around me all the time. Um, I, I was in that environment a lot. And, you know, I guess it, 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 got, it, got, it got its claws in me, so. Mm -hmm. And starting at 15, and then how, how long did that, you said now you've been 10 years, 11 years. Yeah, right. I'm 53, so. Yeah. Uh, take 11 off of that, 42. Mm -hmm. So about 15 to 42. Okay. And was it like a big problem that whole time? Not the entire time. Um, it's interesting. I wasn't a person who, like, I didn't drink every day. Yeah. Um, but when I did, it was all out. Mm -hmm. Like, there, I couldn't, once I started, I couldn't stop. So, you know, a typical night for me, you know, going out to the bar might be 15 beers and shots. You know, essentially... Um, pretty much almost a blackout every time. Hmm. Uh, you know, that was, I, I just, once I started, I couldn't stop. I couldn't put it down and, you know, that led to some, some, some issues. So, hmm. so would you be mind that I maybe diving into some of those issues? Yeah, sure. Up? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, when, when you're younger, um, you don't have the responsibilities. Um, it didn't seem to be as big of a problem, right? Because mm -hmm. I just had me. I didn't have a wife. I didn't have kids. I didn't have a lot of those responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So the effects of it didn't seem to be as as big um, back then. Although, uh, you know, there were times, you know, it had cost me a job at one point in my life. Uh, it had cost me some relationships and friendships in life. Um, it, it's just... It's one of those things where you become sort of a slave to it, you know. And believe it or not, um, you know, growing up, I was very shy and very, my, I, I had huge self-esteem issues, huge. And I still battle with a lot of self-esteem issues today, to be honest with you. Um, but growing up, that was, that was really hard for me uh, to talk to anybody, to, you know, meet girls. Like, I, I just, I couldn't. Um, and I think the alcohol that kind of numbed me and kind of brought out this I don't care about the consequences type of approach, you know, like, oh, well, if they say no, who cares? I'm, you know, I'm having a good time anyways. And so, you know, it was really self-medicating, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some of, some of the issues that I was going through. Um, you know, later in life, I was um, diagnosed with clinical depression and anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. um, so those are things that, you know, I still manage today. Yeah. Uh, but do it in different ways, you know, instead of going to the, going to the bottle, um, you know, I've gone to therapy, I, I take some medication and, uh, you know, and obviously, you know, my faith has really been a key part in, in, uh, in beating it. That is deep. And honestly, I, I feel like a lot of guys go through those same type of situations in life where like for me personally I know that I I uh, I battled um, anxiety and depression mm -hmm. and um, it caused me to do things like drink smoke sleep with rum yeah and do all type of other stuff so like I love that we're going so deep because I mean honestly these are like this is real talk right now you know mm -hmm. yeah for sure you know and I, and I think I think if we look at the issues that we deal with, just anybody in life, yeah. it always goes back to your childhood. Yeah. It 100% goes back yeah. to your childhood, you know, and again, you know, it wasn't an ideal situation in my house. Um, mm -hmm. My dad was pretty rough. He would get pretty rough. Um, you know, I'd kind of try to protect my sister and, you know, get in the, you know, kind of take some things there. Um, and I think just going through some of those things and just the world that we live in today, you know, everybody has some anxiety and some depression, and uh, 
you know, th those are some things that I think everybody deals with, you yeah. know, and I I'm so glad that it's finally getting to be a little more comfortable and a little more acceptable that this stigma around mental health mm. yeah. isn't yeah. what it used to be, right? Yeah. And I honestly think everybody should be in therapy today, just the way agree, the world yeah. is. Yeah. And I mean, you know, people yeah. go to the gym to, to work out their body and to stay in shape. Boy, our mind is under attack all the mm -hmm. time, you know, Always. from the enemy, from the world. Yeah. Um, so why wouldn't you go to someone that is an expert in coping and dealing mm -hmm. with those yeah. things? So I heard before, um, I feel like it was somebody in person that told me this, that therapists, like, they were given a calling and God gave them a calling to be able to understand, to want to know and understand more about like how the human mind works and understand. So like they can understand more about how your mind works than you do yep. just by having like a quick conversation. Yeah. And there's a re that's a gift that they have and like they wouldn't have it if it wasn't meant to be used. And there's like, I, I'm, I've been, I was, I've been in therapy for like over a year, like about a year and I was going every week and this, this last session that we had to decide to go every other week. Mm -hmm. I'm like, and she looked, she looked at me, saw a video over the video, over video and she like looked at me and said, like, yeah, you're ready. You're making progress. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And that's the thing, you know, I think a lot of times people might want, you know, might try therapy and you know, it, they just think, man, it's, they, they didn't do anything. I don't right. feel any better. It's a process. You know, and it might be the person you're with too. Sometimes it's yeah. going to a couple different people to find the one that you kind of gel with, right? Right. And but you have to. It's a process. I you know I relate it to the gym again. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to get in great shape going one time. You have to do it consistently. Yeah. And I think it's the same thing with your mind. Absolutely, I agree. I think like you have something to say. No, no, absolutely, I agree. I feel like if somebody can't get therapy, then you should at least have good counsel where you're able to at least. Mm -hmm release what's on your mind like having a minister or somebody you can just sit there and talk to if you can't afford therapy for whatever reason or whatever yeah. situation is but therapy still needs to happen there's different types of way of therapy well going to a therapist is good going to a pastor going to a counselor going somewhere where you're able to release the mind mm -hmm. i agree i think even like i think for, for trying to figure out which, which direction i, I want to go I, one thing is, I, I really, I, I think a lot of people don't think they need it because they're not in a really bad situation. And I, like you were saying, like the world is so like messed up nowadays. You might not know you're in a bad situation, but and like you, you, know, you might think what you're going through, right, it's just a, like, it's just your life. Yeah. So therefore, why would you need to go to therapy for it? And that's just how it always has been. And I feel like you get to the right therapist just you know, for like just one session and one or like you said, maybe it takes three or four, but your eyes can be open to so many other things. Like, like as to like, maybe there are links back to your childhood that you, to what you're going to how your mind works right now that you weren't thinking of before. Right. And so I don't, I, I, think a lot of like me I didn't go to therapy until there was like the immediate need for it yeah and I think if people like you said like if they went to if people go to the gym when they're weak and they're when they're weak and they keep but they keep going when they're strong they don't you can't stop that's right so like whenever you're going to th whenever you go to therapy like it doesn't there so like, you, you don't just go whenever you're in a bad situation right like you go you go whenever you're uh, you, you go whenever, like, just because you want to grow. Right. Yeah, like, hey, I want to know more about myself. Yeah, and I think, you know, obviously we're different generations, right? Yeah. So I'm 53. These guys are in their 20s. Um, 31. Thir 31. But he looks like he's 22. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Oh, God. <laughs> Amazing. Um, but, like, my generation, you know, the way I grew up was, yeah. um, you know, I... I had to grow up and I had to, if I wanted something done, I had to take care of myself, right? Mm -hmm. I had to do things for myself. Um, my generation was, you don't talk about your feelings. Mm -hmm. That's weakness. Yeah. That's a weakness as a man. It's not something you do. You, you deal with it, right? You shove it down, you deal with it. That's what you do. And that's kind of how we were brought up. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's a reason why a lot of people don't go and why I didn't go for a long time because I thought that makes me less of a man. 
you know, if I can't deal with this on my own, you know, just suck it up. Just deal yeah. with it. Get Honestly, I think our generation still got that. Like, I think the newer generation is finally getting that released off of them that you can talk about being your feelings. Because I feel like me and Thomas specifically have heard all our lives, men don't cry, all the rest of the other stuff that, like, men, as men, we're not allowed to talk about any type of feeling type thing. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, now, now we're just now starting to disassociate with the older generation about that, you know? Yeah, I mean? I'd say probably in the last 10 years, five years, yeah, it's become way more acceptable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Compared to, like, the 70s and 80s. Way more acceptable in the last 10 years uh, than it was back then, for sure. Mm-hmm. But the other thing I just wanted to touch on is, you know, I know that what I've realized is that, you know, some of these trials we go through, some of these weaknesses that we have, or some of these defects that we have, if you will, what's amazing is, is how God uses those things to help others. Amen. I can't tell you how many times, for no reason, I've sat on a plane, you know, I used to travel a lot for work, and I'd sit on a plane, out of all the seats, the person who sat right next to me was dealing with severe anxiety for flying. Mm-hmm. Or I run into someone and, you know, they're dealing with uh, alcohol or drugs issues. And just way more than it should be naturally, right? So I'm very open about my past. I, I, I talk to strangers about it sometimes, you know, I just love talking to people. Yeah. But it's amazing how what you've gone through, you can use to help others. Yeah. And God really facilitates that in just the, in a miraculous way. Mm-hmm. Man, uh, like that, that makes me think about my like just my own personal experience with like with my current situation. Like I've brought up lot, like we had a conversation yesterday in our one small group, um, uh, like how. If whenever you, I feel like it's a lot easier whenever you're in tune with God, when you're ever you're in tune with God, yeah, to be able to say like, my situation can be a testimony even while I'm in it. It's good, and it's not just like at the end. It's not just at the end of it where like, oh, look at what God brought me through. Uh, like what brought me through, which is a good thing. Like you get to the like some you can get to at the end. You get to the end of your like a trial. Yeah, and. But even in the midst of the trial, God's still there. Well, it just gives you so much credibility, right? So, yeah. you know, if someone were to talk to me about, you know, battling alcohol or addiction or depression, whatever it might be, if they haven't gone through that, yeah, you know, I, in my mind, I feel like, man, you just don't, you don't understand. Like, you, right. don't, you don't get it. Like, yeah. you know, so while we're going through it, there's other people going through it. Yeah. And, you know as they say, iron sharpens iron, right? Yeah. Exactly. So if you're in that same place, you know, you can help each other along and encourage each other. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, I think that's huge. You know, one of the biggest influences on my life, um, is one of my best friends, his name's Pat Barnes. Mm-hmm. You know, he goes to church with us okay. and, um, Pat's just an incredible human being. And he has been such an influence on me in maintaining my sobriety. Mm-hmm. Um, he also, you know, um, he's had some experience with it, but, um, and he shares that. I'm not sharing anything that he doesn't share openly, but, uh, he is, he has been my rock, uh, through going through this, you know, there've been, I, I tell you what's interesting is, you know, like I said, I'm coming up on 11 years, Yeah. but it's still, I don't want to say a daily battle, but it's still a battle even after 11 years, you know, it's funny. Um, about once a year I'll have a conversation with Sarah and she knows it's coming. Sarah's my wife. Um, she'll. It, she's gotten so. She's amazing. She's gotten so good at it. You know where I'm, a hundred percent serious, and I'll say, you know what, I'm a different person now. I'm older now. I'm more wise. I'm in my faith. You know, it would be fine for me to have a case of beer. I can put one or two in the fridge. That way, I don't drink a ton. And I'm literally thinking. At that time, at that moment, in that moment, that I can do this. Like, I can do this. And, you know, when I first started doing this, she'd go, no, you can't, no, you can't. And it's it's amazing. She's learned that she just listens, and I talk through it, 
And at the end, I say, nah, you know what? I can't do that. <laughs> you know? So I get to that place where I'm like, no, I, I, I can't. Yeah. You know? But it is. It's hard because, you know, you go out with your buddies and they're having a couple beers and the way the world is, you know, it'd be nice just to kind of numb yourself a little bit just to get that relaxation feeling. Um, you know, I still crave that. I still crave that. I do. Um, but, you know, it's about community. It's about who yeah. you surround yourself yeah. with. Right? And you guys know. I mean... You know, you surround yourself with good people and people with, uh, you know, similar values, similar beliefs. And, uh, you know, you have that person to, to kind of lean on their shoulder when you need it, you know. And, and you know they have their be your best interest at heart. Yeah. You know, one thing Pat and I did is, you know, um, we kind of at the beginning of our relationship, we kind of had a pact that we said, um, if we see some, if we see each other stumbling or messing up, or doing something, you know, not real godly. Uh, we give each other permission to call it out. Mm. And I think everybody needs yeah, accountability. accountability. For sure. Especially so as good. men, we need accountability. And, you know, and in the moment when you hear it, it you know, you might get a little upset. You know, you know, say I raised my voice to my, my son. Mm -hmm. And Pat might go, hey, Dave, you got to, you know, the, the, the immediate reaction is, don't tell me what to do. That's my kid, right? That's what you think immediately. Right. That's kind yeah. of your reaction. Yeah. But, you know, we made that pact, you know, and I know he's coming out of love. Yeah. You know, he's not coming to, to, to put me down or to embarrass me or humiliate me. He's coming from love. You know, we've done that back and forth with each other over the years where, you know, we need to call each other out every once in a while and say, hey, you know, get back in step. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but we, but we have that relationship that we know that, you know, it's out of love. So, yeah. accountability is huge. Yeah. I also believe what you said was so deep about like people you surround with because the Bible talks about bad company, sir. Bad company corrupts good manners. So, like, you could be having all the right intentions, but if you're surrounded by the wrong people all the time, mm. their views and they'll get to you. Like, you know, I mean, if, if you're not pulling them up, they're pulling you out. And that's. Yeah so important to see that like okay okay now this i'm out of this lifestyle let me go around people who have the same mindset of i got out i'm not going back you know mm -hmm. yeah it's so powerful there's a few good things in that bible huh yeah. <laughs> 66 books is, it's gotta be good 40 different authors it's insane <laughs> oh, and that, i think um I want to kind of pivot us for a second. Yeah. Okay, I think what you're talking about is really good, but you also mentioned how you had to establish these new habits. And uh, I want you to, I was kind of curious as to what those were and how you went about establishing them. Great question. That's awesome. Um, it's interesting because I, I remember the day um, that something kind of clicked in my mind, mm -hmm. and it was at church. And our founding pastor, Pastor Lee, had given a message, and it was about guardrails. And he talked about, in his life, you know, he realized that, you know, it's, it's a healthy practice to, to put guardrails up in your life. Like, he gave examples of, you know, he used to travel a lot for work, I used to travel a lot for work. Um, and he would say, you know, I, one of my guardrails was I would never be alone with a female at any point. It's just a good guardrail to put up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, I would never um, drink more than two, two alcoholic beverages within 24 hours. Hmm. He yeah. said, you know, because as you know, you know, once you kind of cross that threshold, you know, your decision making, uh, all those things get kind of fuzzy. Yeah. And uh, you lose the ability even more to resist those temptations. And when he said that, it kind of clicked with me. And I said, man, you know what? That makes a lot of sense to me. Putting guardrails up in your life to kind of protect yourself and protect your heart from temptation, right? Because temptation's strong. And, Absolutely. you know, people who aren't Christians and might be listening to this, you know, once you become a Christian, it's not like the temptations go away. In fact, a yeah. lot of times the enemy wants to attack more because you're living a life for Christ now, right? So um, by using those guardrails in all kinds of facets of your life, that's kind of where it started, but I knew my guardrail had to be zero drinks. Yeah. I couldn't do two, right? So it had to be zero. So I decided that day literally to stop, and um, I did it on my own. 
uh, which I don't recommend. There's a lot of great support out there, like yeah. Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, there's different Christian groups and, and small groups that you can go to about it. Um, but being a hard head that I was, I, I just said, I'm going to do it cold turkey. Mm -hmm. And um, it worked for me. Um, it was tough, but it worked. And that was really the thing. So, you know, some of the habits that I got into, you know, I quit going to places where um, it was just about partying. You know, those, I eliminated those. I had to eliminate some friends in my life, right? That that, that was kind of yeah. their deal, was just kind of going out and partying it up. You know, yeah. I kind of had to separate myself from that a little bit. Um, like the other side of the community. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, uh, you know, just, just things like, and it's interesting because with habits and with addiction and things, a lot of times you tie them to certain activities. Like if I were to go to a Pirates game. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got to have a beer when you go to the Pirate game. You hear mm -hmm. people say it on TV. You, yeah. hear, you hear announcers Absolutely. say it on the radio. Mm -hmm. You know, someone will say, oh, oh, I didn't drink last night, you know, because I had... You went to the game and you didn't drink a beer? What's wrong with you? It's like, yeah. no, those two don't have to go together. Mm -hmm. You know, they really don't. And there's a lot of pressure in society um, that, that put those things on you. You know, and, and I would say alcohol is really tough because yeah. it's legal. Yeah. yeah, you get it anywhere. Yeah, right, and it's everywhere around us. Anytime you go to the restaurant, anytime you go to a sporting event, anytime you go, it's always there, and and you can get it. You don't need to sneak around. You don't need to go to a special dealer. You know, I mean, you can get it whenever you want. Absolutely, there's yeah. nothing preventing you from getting it. So, you know, it, it is. It's a it's a struggle. It's a not a struggle. It's a battle. You know, you got to battle it. And um, but yeah, those are some of the habits that I that I really kind of focused on. Um, also, you know, going to church every week and, and, you know, also just, again, that getting that community around you, being around the right people, yeah. um, and replacing it, you know, replacing it with other things, you know, healthier things. So, mm -hmm. that's, wow. That's so good. Yeah. That, like, Lee, he talked about guardrails, one of you were talking about it, were you talking about, like, uh, like uh, I, re I remember a message that was, like, more recent. Uh, three weeks ago, when you're, or well, was a month ago, a couple months ago, actually. Yeah. I know what you're talking about, when he was driving, he was talking about, but that, this, this was 11 this years ago, ago. this was 11 yeah. years ago, exactly. right, <laughs> I was like, I was like, he just talked about that recently, too, interesting, yeah, um, but man, that's nuts though that you remember the, like the detail, those details after eleven years. Like that that speaks to the impact it made. For sure. I mean, it's you know, it's it's a complete change of life. Yeah. It's a complete change of life. You know, it it, it you know, and then and then you worry about it. You're like, mm -hmm. hey, am I going to be fun? Are people going to want want to be around me? Yeah. Um, you know, because I used to be the jokester and the you know still are. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> At my age now, man, I don't do the crazy daredevil stunt stuff I used to do because it hurts way more. But uh, yeah, I used to have no fears, no consequences, you know, all the time, just just getting out there and getting wild. Um, but yeah, that, no, that's good. But yeah, it's a big life change. So it is something that you remember, and it's something that you, uh, you know, it's a big pivot point in your life for sure. Yeah, I think that's so powerful. I love the Bible. I always refer to it, but like when the God talks about how we overcome Satan, He says by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, and that's so powerful because I, your testimony, Dave, is gonna help so many people who are in that struggle now, and those people who have overcame that struggle, hearing it so they can keep staying on the right path. It is so powerful to hear that. Well, also, it might just help people, like, maybe that have gone that have gone through it and have now overcome it, be more open about about sharing that sharing their own testimony, because a lot of the time you might a lot of time people might just think like, who's going to listen to me? Yeah. Who's going to listen to what I have to say? Yeah, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. You know, yeah. in fact, it's something you should be proud of. Right. You know, Absolutely. and and especially if you can help someone mm -hmm. with that. And, you know, I would just say to anyone out there that is, you know, struggling or, you know, is thinking that maybe this is becoming an issue, just talk to somebody. Yeah. Reach out to someone, you know. You, you don't, don't, don't do it on your own. Mm -hmm. Don't hold it in. Let someone know, you know. Check out Amplify Church. Go online yeah. and check out our church, man, because we're a church of broken people. You yes. do not have to be perfect to come into our Amen. church because we'd have zero people. 
And we've mm-hmm. all been through things. Absolutely. We've all had life experiences. And we're there to help, support, and love. So, you know, and again, the church has been such a big part of my life. And that was the other thing, you know, um, my, my dad's parents, they were both really bad alcoholics. And he went through a really hard life. Um, and then it kind of carried on to him, right? Mm-hmm. And, and then it carried on to me. And, you know, once I had children, I said, you know what? This has to stop. Yeah. Like, it, the chain has to break here. Like, I don't want my kids to ever see me wasted or, you know, being a fool. Um, and I don't want them to, to have to deal with this. So, you know, the one thing about Amplify is, you know, I am so, so thankful for people like uh, you and Sean and just so many other people that have just poured into my kids' lives. And the fact that they have such a strong relationship with Christ, it was funny because when my younger son got baptized, um, my older son got baptized a couple years ago, and then my younger son got baptized last year or this year, I can't remember. Um, But once he got baptized, I went to one of our pastors, Brandon, he was there, and I said, Brandon, I can literally die tomorrow. I said, my life is complete. My boys are saved. And I said, you know, I could die tomorrow and it's okay. And um, because unfortunately they're going to go through struggles. Yeah. And they have gone through struggles. But man, but do they have a base, a foundation that I never had. That's the other thing. You know, I only became a Christian at 40. So, yeah. you know, I didn't have God in my life. But boy, they do. And what a difference that makes in, in life. It's just, it's, it's huge. Absolutely. So I'm just so thankful for you know, your guys' generation and the way that you guys pour into these younger kids and um, just, it's just, you guys are incredible. I I can't imagine at your age being where you guys are at because I was such a, so, so lost at that point, you know, and you guys are just so amazing and uh, it just gives me hope for the future, so. Yeah, I really appreciate you saying that, dude. Yeah, that is, I mean it from my heart. I think like, I I think the same thing when I think look at like we like we had Andrew uh, on here and I think the same thing when I look at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and because uh, whenever I first started coming here and he like he was eighteen when I first started coming and I was like, I was like, how much you know how much about the Bible? Yeah. Like I've read like a page <laughs> 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 and like uh, in the beginning that's what yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and like. So no, like, I know I, I maybe not like of course there's like different time span between us and uh, yeah. but like but no, I can kind of get the testament. Uh, I also like there's one thing that's popping in my mind the whole time you were talking like, like while you were talking though specifically about alcohol because like I, I never really don't know if you would call it a pro- I, it was a problem to the extent of whenever I would go wow I drink just because it was a social thing to do yeah and I never got to the point of, uh, of Blacking out. I've like I've got a point where I've lost a couple hours, but like um, like that is blacking out. Yeah, losing time. Okay, so it doesn't mean you pass out. Right. Sometimes you do, but blacking out is losing a period of time. Mm-hmm. And like now, I I've I like right now, like I never decided to stop drinking. I just don't. And like part of it was just like it was expensive. Like yeah. my, my last, <laughs> that too. My, my, that too. My, my last beer run, like I remember, it was like seventy dollars, yeah. and I was like, I was drinking IPAs and like doing, like drinking. Everything. I was like, it's like man, I can't. It's like I can't. It's like, I can't do that. I just never went back, and like I have a cabinet full of like bottles and stuff, and like I haven't touched it in over a year. Are you trying to tempt me? No, sorry, sorry, dude. <laughs> <Sorry, babe. laughs> we have no bottles in this house. <laughs> sorry. Oh, that's 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 Don't make your brother stumble. <laughs> but, but uh, no, it's, uh, I, uh, I, I, I said I was telling John the other day. I, I, I think I told my friend David. Um, I was saying like I tried some whiskey the other day, like a couple weeks ago. Just like, yeah, you know, I haven't had it in a while. It's been there. I was like, I'll try some. I was like, and I, I took a sip. I was like, Man, this stuff is gross. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, how do I? I was like, I had half the bottle gone. I was like, how am I drinking this stuff? I was like, I was just drinking it because it was like the manly thing to drink. Right. And I um, I bought it because I had a monkey on the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. I was like, why not? And like, um, 
And, like, I feel like I just lost it. Like, personally, I feel like I just lost the taste for it. Like, I, I like, will go out. I'll still have a beer when I go out. And, like, mm-hmm. just, like, one casual beer with a friend. And, like, but, like, having it at home, like, it, it feels like it, that was, like, the old, my, in my old life. Yeah. It feels like I, I was thinking, like, what I was specifically thinking about while you we were talking was, like, whenever I, specifically whenever I became a Christian, I was starting to dive more into my faith more. Because I, w- I was, I guess, technically a Christian, Roman Catholic uh, growing up, but, like, I fell away from my faith uh, for a while. And I, like, that was part of that life, with drinking and having always having beer in the fridge and then, like, going out every other weekend and, um, and, and, like, I think about it now, like, I do not like who I am whenever, even after a couple drinks. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not going to, so it's like, I just don't. It's like, it was, it was like my, uh, I, I never really, I never actually made that decision. It was just like, it just fell off. Yeah. And I think like, I'm thankful for that. For sure. For sure. Like, it just like, was never like, the temptation it was like, the temptation was like, gone. Like the idea of like drinking, like, it like, was almost detestable. Yeah. And with that also, you know, when you're in that. You know, especially if you're, you know, in an addiction type level. Yeah. It comes with a lot of lying. Yeah. A lot of deceit. Um, a lot of bad things, right? And that weighs on you too. Um, so, you know, it's not just the physical effects of alcohol that, you know, that make it troubling. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm not saying for everyone. Yeah. A lot of people can have a couple beers and, and that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm jealous. I wish I could have two beers and stop. I, that'd be great. But I can't. Um, and I kind of... Uh, Compare it to like, it's almost like an allergic reaction. Mm. Like if you were allergic to penicillin, Sean, and you took penicillin, your body would just react in such a way. If I took it, my body wouldn't react that way, right? Right. I kind of see alcohol the same way for me. Um, It takes a hold of me. Yeah. And it takes me into dark places. Um, It just affects my chemistry differently. Um, So, you know, I'm not saying people can't drink ever or anything like that. You know, if you're sensible and responsible and you can, that's awesome. You know, that's good on you. Um, but, you know, just for me, it just didn't work. I, I honestly agree. I mean, um, I feel like when it comes to alcohol specifically, it's like, it's took me t- to the very darkest places of humankind. And like the man I was when I'm on alcohol is just, awful like mm-hmm. literally i'm a womanizer when i'm drunk yep. i'm trying to because i'm trying to do everything the world wants like i'm i think everybody else who's worldly would think i'm fun and exciting because that's the worldly look of things yep. but like on a like once i got like i agree with you thomas like when i got into a real like because i was a prodigal son i've done everything under the sun but at first i started with a relationship with god from like from zero until like 19 i had a really strong relationship with god 19 i had a falling away when i was in college first week of college and because that's when you get your freedom and then you act stupid with the freedom right yeah so that was me so like diving deep into that most of those problems and reason why i didn't finish college was because of alcohol and weed yeah literally those were the the things if I was, if I wasn't getting weed, I was drinking, and I, those drinks were like, oh, okay, I was drinking because it's the social norm every Friday and Saturday, you gotta party hard, boom, boom, oh, we're having a party Tuesday this time, we had to drink, boom, boom, you know what I mean, like, wherever the party was, you had to drink, and those drinks was like, okay, now that you're drunk, you can be crazy fun, Sean, and now that you're crazy fun, Sean, you have to find a hot chick and sleep with her. Yeah. Or otherwise you fell for the night. Yep. You know what I mean? And that was like the mindset that was behind it. And that's why like it's so incredible what God does. Because now like if I have a beer, right, it's not the same as when I was drinking before. Because now I can't really enjoy a beer like I used to. I'm not going to hold you. As, as a Christian, man, it's not the same as where I was when I was a worldly man drinking a beer. Because when I was a worldly man, I was thinking, okay, I drink this beer, and now I can get drunk, and now I can drink. But now when I drink, I'm just like, bro, this is nasty. Why am I doing this? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, the taste is like, why? Like, it's, I, I try to do it to be funny. What am I doing? It's like, it, the after I do it, it's like, it, instant regret. Like, why'd you do it? 
it's not good. It didn't taste good. There was no good outcome from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pros and cons. Yeah. yeah. So not like, too many pros. Like, a lot of cons. No. Like, honestly, that's why I lost my Walmart job because I was being goofy. My friends were golfing. They came in, work with a beer, and I was like, oh, shoot. Let me pass their drinks beer. It'd be funny. And then, boom. Yeah. It wasn't funny. Consequences. Like, consequences, right? Yeah. And it wasn't like, oh, I was, like, buying beer off my friends or, like, planned to drink that day. The devil just tempted me. Yeah. Because I haven't drank in, like, three years. And he was like, here, just have a sip. And boom. Yeah. Just like that. I can't even believe you said prodigal son because yeah. that is absolutely my very most favorite story in the Bible. And it's mm-hmm. the one I relate to the most yeah. is prodigal son. So I can't believe you said that. That's incredible. Um, the other thing is, one of the things is um, when you're consuming you know, lots of alcohol and getting yeah. drunk, um, you do stupid things. But the next day you can say, mm-hmm. oh, I was drunk. Oh, I was. Yeah. You have an yeah. excuse. Yeah. But guess what? When you get sober... You don't have that excuse anymore. Yeah. So you really got to, you know, it's a whole shift of your mindset. It's like I could still be a crazy dude and sober, but now if I do something really dumb or, you know, something that's immoral, I can't say, oh, I was drunk, you yeah. know? Yeah. No, that's me now. That's yeah. on me. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so that's another that's another adjustment that you make, uh, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, I want to, th- like, speak to a couple of things. Like the... That we talked about two different sides of the community that you brought up of how being in a, like the old community of like what what was causing you to essentially go off the cliff and go over your like what the guardrails you hadn't set yet like you go over go over you go over the cliff and realizing like part of part of the guardrail was that they're actually for you those people were actually like those people at least in those activities would put you over the edge and then realizing that like there's a other there's actually a different community that can help you have a healthier life not they don't even have to be like telling like like you have like pat barnes and like but even specifically you don't even necessarily need to have like you should i feel like it's great and i feel like like if you have like if you don't have somebody in your life for like that right now maybe it's because you don't have the right like you're not surrounding yourself with the right people but like can I have like Andrew Brigado mm-hmm. and like uh, and like we like we talk to each other and like I'll ask him like did I like like was that dumb <laughs> I'll ask him like was that, was that dumb and I feel like you have to ask <laughs> but like uh, but like uh, just being around people that have like like I think specifically speaking from like a Christian standpoint and being around people that have that like visible wisdom and like have that will w- have that had that weather like being around you who has been through something and has been through stuff that you put yourself that you put yourself through but now know what it's like to go through that like just being around before i like before knowing that like i would still like i i still think the same thing of like like oh wow like he he's he's a slight He's this person who who people see and like he like he has his heart to serve. He like always seems to be in this bright, happy ad, uh, attitude. And like now you're telling and, and now you're telling like what happened way before that, what like, what led up to that point. So like that I have that one question written down, and we're definitely like way over time. This is gonna be a long, this is gonna be a long, this is gonna be a longest, this is gonna be our longest, our longest episode. I think it's people fine. love it. Though, uh, but like, uh, I, I'm just like, I'll ask one final question. Sure. <laughs> and then we'll, and then we'll, and then, uh, is it the beauty and the breaking pretty much? Not specifically. That's not, I don't know where you're going with that, but because oh, that's uh, what you were leading off with of just now. Like, was it? Because yeah, <laughs> you were talking about how they, well, he was all broken and stuff, right? Yeah. And now that God has refined David into, like, the man that he is now, and he's happy and joyous from all the broken pieces. So, the beauty and the breaking. Okay, well, you got that out of what I said. That's not where I was going, but that's uh, what you got out of it. That's yes. good. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys listening, the, the dynamic of these two is amazing. <laughs> you just got to see it. It's, it's I love it. I love it. They're amazing together. <laughs>
<laughs> Where were you going, Thomas? <laughs> yeah, my final question. Um, it's for the people, like, prefer people who are listening who don't know what their guard role should be. And, like, how, how, like, if they're like, I don't have any, I don't feel like I have any guardrails, how, how do you go about identifying what those should be are? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. So I, I shared, you know, for me, it came through a, a sermon, right? Yeah. Through, through Pastor Lee. Um, it, it, you know, if you, don't, if you don't have that, number one, I'd say get into church. Um, mm. Find a church uh, near you. Plug into a community. It's life-changing. It's amazing. Uh, it'll change your life forever. Um, but, you know, if you're looking at yourself uh, and deciding, you know, what guardrails can I set up, I would say... Take a look at, you know, what is bringing you down? Mm, you know, yeah. what are what is causing stress in your life? What is causing uh, you to argue with your friends or your significant other? What are those things that are constantly um, negative? What are the effects mm. of what you're seeing? And then find guardrails to help you keep away from that, right? That's what guardrails are, like you said, yeah. going over the cliff, right? So what are the things that are sending you over the cliff? Yeah. You know, is it if it's drinking, then you put up a guardrail and you say, listen, I'm not going to drink. If it's mm. um, pornography, you say, well, you know what? I'm not going to be alone on my computer. It, you know, whatever it is. Um, but again, you, you need to find someone for accountability. Yeah. You know, that's huge. Um, don't keep it to yourself. Share mm -hmm. it with someone. Let them know what you're doing. And ask them to hold you accountable. Yeah, uh, that that's so important because we're not strong. We're not strong enough on our own. We definitely are are not. And and that's where God really comes in because God is strong enough. Mm -hmm. God can overcome. He can do miraculous things. Man. Um, and you know, having that faith and having that relationship with Christ and with you know with God is key. Mm -hmm. um, I think in anything in life. Uh, you know, and it's just such a better life, man. I, I can just tell you that the other side is so much better. It, it's hard, and especially at first, it's, it's difficult, but it's so much better. It's so much better. So, and if anybody ever wanted to reach out to me, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to talk to anyone. So, you know, if you see me at church, see me out, whatever, come up, man. I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy to talk to you. So, it's awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Dave, for yeah. for coming like uh, so and like having the thing down with us, because yeah, this what like this. I I've been saying it a lot every time we record a new episode, but this is now my favorite episode. <laughs> <laughs> he says that to all the guests. Now. Yeah. You know, he tries to butter them up. So. <laughs> I also have to say, you, you, and when, they can't see it. We don't have a camera yet, but like I really like that watch. Oh, <laughs> can, I can I tell you a funny story about this watch real yeah. fast? Yeah. And we'll end. So, you know, back in the day before kids and, you know, I was making decent money and had more expendable income, yeah. you know, I would buy some really nice watches, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, I'd have like uh, Tag Heuer or Movado, you know, it might be 1100 bucks, 1200 bucks, nothing super crazy, like, you know, Rolex is 10 grand, but yeah. nice, you know, expensive watches. Yeah. And they were nice. Um, this watch that I have on right now, I exponentially get more compliments on this watch <laughs> uh, every day almost people point it out and go i love that watch that's amazing guess how much this watch cost it's the cheapest watch in the set huh guess how much uh it looks nice though um guess 300 bucks Thomas. that's right well i was gonna guess 30 dollars what? what 30 dollars <laughs> <laughs> No so way. again, it goes. To, that's another great thing. It goes to show you, right? Yeah. It's not always about the brand. It's not yeah. always about the clout. It's not always about how much something costs. Let's go. That's yeah. good. Uh, literally, this is the second one I've had of the exact same watch. So thirty dollars. So uh, yeah, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Um, you know to. To have nice things, yes. I guess. So. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Too. No, but I appreciate you guys having me. Seriously, this was so much fun, uh, especially for an old man like me to hang out with you guys. And, uh, you know, this is a different world for me. So I loved it, man. I loved it. I love you guys. And uh, just thanks for having me.
Yeah, uh, for sure. We love you, Dave, for real. And the words you spoke will definitely, definitely help other people. So that's amazing. Awesome, man. Appreciate All it. All right. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. If you want to listen to this whole episode, I really appreciate it. This is definitely our longest one. But if you um, don't already, uh, if you're listening on Spotify or you're listening on Apple Podcasts or any platform that you can subscribe, go, uh, definitely give us a follow, five subscribe, stars. five star review, and share us out on social media if you really like this episode. Uh, we honestly really appreciate it every single time. We see somebody share out uh, one of our episodes on uh, their in- on Instagram or Facebook or whatever platform you're on. So, but yeah, we'll. Uh, I want to say again, thank you, thank you, Dave, for com- for uh, coming down, and uh, we see you guys next time. We love you.